What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking on a game called The First Men. This one has a big update coming in the next couple days to their beta branch, so I figured it was time to reacclimate the community. Those of you that may have it on your early access checklist, those of you that bought the game but were still waiting for more updates, well, it's not here, but they just posted on Steam saying that it's coming very, very soon to their beta branch. And so before that happens, let's take a look at the game. Let's dive in for a little bit and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or if it just doesn't look like it's right for you. There's a link for you down below. You can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream down there. I'm a little out of action right now because I've got a, a GPU that's fizzling out on me at the moment, and so I can't really stream right now. I'm barely able to record because it crashes on me all the time. The RMA is filed, they're sending a new one, but we're kind of like touch and go right now when it comes to like long form media over on Twitch. Normally I stream a lot, but unfortunately, not this week. Uh, so The First Men, what is it? The First Men is a RPG infused colony survival game a la something like RimWorld where you are a number of survivors in a bunch of different scenarios. I think there's four or five different maps, so I can't really give you a unified storyline because every map has a different storyline and like a different quest goal that you go through in order to win. But in the case of our current run, we are a bunch of humans that were sent to a pocket world by the gods. Uh, we were imprisoned in hell. They sent us here to test our worthiness and to see if we were worth saving. And if we complete this quest and defeat one of their great enemies, they will give us this world to make our own. And so our goal is to kill a bunch of sub-bosses and then a main boss, at which point we will inherit the Earth through violence. And so this is my colony. This game is kind of interesting. This has always been one of those colony survival games that scratched a certain itch for me just because there's a lot of games in the room that seem to spend all of their time aping RimWorld, or at least following in RimWorld's path, and if it's not them, then it's Dwarf Fortress. This is a game that attacks colony survival from a completely different direction in the respect that it's got a tech tree and it's got things you work up and through, but it's all about the personal development of the individual characters inside the colony. Like, that's what matters. So nothing happens in this colony until somebody levels up. Let me give you an example here. So up at the top right here, I have a gatherer set. My gatherer is right here. He's over here gathering mushrooms. He brings them back. The mushrooms get put into storage. The cook who's working over here will go get those mushrooms and convert them into meals. Now this guy right here has a thing called his path. Your path is divided up into basically every job that you've ever done and also your personal development. He's a gatherer and that means when he levels up, we get a new building or a new item or a new thing. Really what it's meant to represent is every time this character's class, quote unquote, like air quotes, levels up, a new building becomes active that makes your life a little bit easier. Now, these don't become unlocked. They don't go into the build menu. Uh, these are a one-time, one-placement thing, so I can pick a tomato crop over here and put it on that side. The utility being that whenever he levels up, we develop a big crop field over here with various vegetables inside of it, so that once he depletes the neighboring areas of all of the stuff that's in here, we will then have crops that self-renew and regrow over and over and over again. Likewise, in the case of the cook, since the cook makes consumables, normally the cook just produces like a couple of meals a day. But when the cook levels up, they will cook something extra special, almost like a masterwork. That can be a normal meal that you can just throw into the stockpile if you're in need of more food. But can, it can also be a consumable like a potion that will go into this menu, like the wild nuts over here. If I give that to someone, it levels up their vitality for 24 hours so that they have more HP. Or if I have Mushroom Surprise, throughout the course of your adventures in this game, it's possible that your warriors or the people defending your colony, they may get wounded or they may get a permanent debuff that they can't get rid of. Mushroom Surprise will fix that. And so, as you see what I mean, it's all tied to these individual characters leveling up. You do have a wide assortment of buildings that you can build just in a vacuum that are available to you, but all of the special stuff comes from people leveling up. So like, were I to build a blacksmith, the blacksmith would not produce anything. 
until he levels up. He would go and he would work on the forge and get plus one XP, plus one XP, plus one XP. And then when he levels up, it'll ask me what he was creating during that time that he was learning, whether it be like a sword or a helmet or a breastplate that I could then give to my warriors. Likewise, with your warriors, they level up the same way. So I have two children right now that are training to be warriors because that's what the colony is lacking. When they're working on a training dummy, they get the adventurer perk it levels up. And so when it goes up to level one, they pick a class. There's three classes in the game right now, protector, slayer, and I think preserver. So basically healer, DPS, and tank. And then after that, every single level gives them a trait, which is listed down here that will increase their stats on their character. It'll increase their attack power. It'll increase their ability to dodge. And you want to tailor those to the class that the character is. If you wanted the more specialized perks that go along with their role, like you want your tank to get tanking stuff, I have to send him out into the wider world to actually fight enemy mobs. And every time he hits an enemy, he'll get plus one XP towards his class role. And so it's an interesting way of restructuring the colony survival trope in such a way where advancement in this game is intrinsically linked to your characters leveling up. It has nothing to do with what buildings you have available. Uh, unlocking a building will only unlock other buildings that are already inside this menu right here. But there are special buildings, like this resting hut. This resting hut was a masterpiece that I got from my carpenter when he leveled up. And this has the utility of normally, if people don't have a sleeping spot, they have to go eat food to get their stamina back when they get tired from doing whatever labor they're working on. You can see it right here with the green meter. With this resting hut, they now have a specific place they can go to where they can sleep if they're fed but they're low energy. Otherwise, they would just have to wait around until their energy regenerates. And I think that's a very interesting system. I think that's actually very appealing. It's an interesting way at looking at the way a society functions through like their works only. And so for what I've got going on right now, I'm actually just waiting on births to happen. And it looks like we have one of those right here. This is the nursemaid. The nursemaid, basically someone goes to work inside of there and they prepare so that a child can be born. Right now we have the option between a male and a female child. It doesn't really matter. They may have similar stats or dissimilar stats. Uh, everybody has attributes in this game, and those attributes matter for what you want them to do for a job and what they're likely to level up to be able to do. For the most part, I found the gameplay to be very, very on rails. Uh, so I do think that the game, with where it's at right now, it needs more things that press up on the player and make their adventures a little bit more stressful. There is one map that I liked where you get attacked every now and again. That's good. That actually added some tension to the game. The map that I'm playing right now is kind of play at your own pace. Nothing's going to try to, like, murder you, as far as I know, as long as you don't go too far outside your borders. But there are no procedural Rimworld or Dwarf Fortress-style events that happens. There's no greater politics taking place. And I think that's the next place where the game needs to go. It needs its equivalent of, like, nuclear fallout, solar flare, like these random events that come up that force you to interact with your colony a little bit, because right now they're all basically little automatons. You assign them to a job and they just do that job and they always do it without fail and nothing messes with that. Nothing kind of like pokes at the balloon and tries to get it to pop. And I do find that a little bit of principal antagonism inside of a game is good for me. Now, my Slayer over here, she has leveled up. For her, she's got a choice of three perks. We can increase her HP and her stamina. We can lower her threat profile and then give her movement speed. Or we can increase her block chance. Since she's a slayer, she doesn't block anyways. We want her to be low on the threat table. So I'm going to go ahead and give her selfishness or whatever that was. Uh, everything in this game has an associated color with it. So you will find that as you go into the game and people, they get their personal development up on their path list. They will develop things like greediness or courage or something like that. Those are mostly just traits in name, what they actually do, because there's no interpersonal relationships or anything between your colonists. That's another area where the game needs to start fleshing itself out. But anyways, those little perks right there, what they do is they make it so you generate these faction points right here. These points represent the aspects of your society that you do well. So right now we're very prosperous. We're reasonably industrial. Uh, we're starting to get more unified, and these are points that tick upwards every single time one of these guys finishes their job cycle while having a colored perk that matches up with these right here. And then it kicks the points on into there. And then these points are used for occasionally when people level up, you'll get like a really, really cool option. So if I had a blacksmith 
he would probably make like a helmet, a breastplate, and a sword. But for the legendary sword that's way better than everything else on offer, he would have to tap into 100 points of unity inside of our stockpile, which sort of, I guess, symbolizes him calling in favors and like knowing a guy who can get him the medal required and will give him that medal in order to make that legendary sword. And so there is kind of this layer of esotericism to it that I think you logically have to like rationalize your way through. And then once you think about that, you're like, oh, okay, I kind of get what's happening here. The problem is that use of unity right there to get that sword is unspoken. It's just a point exchange instead of like him actually going over there and talking to the person and then an event box pops up and is like, this person, you know, has the medal that you seek. What do you want to do in order to convince him to give it to you? And then you would have three options there. And these tend to line up to, like, amenity is basically, like, selfishness. A person's ability to look out for themselves. This is the ability to look out for the tribe. This is how influential your tribe is. This is how industrious you are and how prosperous you are. And so just for that guy to have the medal right there, it would be cool if you required a certain level of prosperity. Then when he goes over, you can use selfishness or you can use an appeal to unity to get it from him. Like, it's time to start developing out the little storylines and whatnot and getting rid of, I think... The narrative blandness, I think, that the game has going on emergently, I, I guess is the way that I would put it on out there. But for right now, I've actually just got to sit and wait. I'm waiting for my little warrior children to grow up and become adults. We do have another kid over here. We could probably do something with him in order to make ourselves more successful, but I haven't really scouted the map yet. So I'm going to grab Shaw real fast. Can I grab Shaw? I don't know if Shaw will actually do it. What if the carpenter does it? Okay, so what I need is for one of my drafted people to go out and explore the map a little bit. So there's Shaw right there. He's drafted into my little war party over here. Uh, we need to start exploring the map. And the map actually is pretty chunky for this scenario. Uh, there's definitely enemies and things around here that you'll want to watch out for. They start out mundane. Things like foxes or wolves or spiders. Things like that, and then as you get further on into the scenario, it'll get nastier and nastier. So it looks like we've got a little mining cave over here that's got, like, metal resources that we can tap on into. Probably for later crafting, would be my guess. We'll go ahead and peel on over to this side. There's a meat bug over there. He do be looking kind of tasty, though. Look at him. I'd eat him. I don't know, dude. He's already, like, in the rough shape of a brisket. Like, he doesn't even need work in that regard. What I was actually trying to do, though, was reveal some of that stone on that side, because I think it's time for us to get a mason. I need three more timber, though, before we can pump out the mason. And there's our 20th board right there. So with the 20 boards in hand, we can now make our little mason lodge over on this side. But we want to be careful not to delete any of the little doodads over there. They moved the mega crawdad around. I know there's a kid walking around here that doesn't have a job. Uh, children can be instantly assigned to jobs. They yearn for the mines, so on and so forth. So you'd want to assign them early. If you have a lot of kids walking around, you should probably have them get started early on leveling up their traits. Uh, woodcutter leveled up. Woodcutters, they just plant trees whenever they level up to replace the ones that they've chopped down. This guy over here has a tomato field. Maybe we'll diversify and we'll get some eggplant in there a little bit. We also got some more traits on this side. Nursemaid is ready to go, as you can see right there. For 100 points, we can get a character that starts out with way better stats. Uh, than some of the other characters that are going to be rattling around. For right now, I'm not making a new warrior, so I don't really need that. I just need people that can work. And so the mason, what he'll do is he'll start harvesting off of these little stone nodes up here and over here. I don't know how long those little stone nodes last, uh, but he'll start cutting bricks, which are going to be a resource that we need for making more advanced buildings. Manufacturing is going to become important, uh, so we're probably going to want to wait until we have 10 timber. Once we have 10 timber... It'll be going down uh, because we need to make a protector's workshop and a slayer's forge so that we can start assigning the children to start making weapons of war to fight against the many nasty things that are out there. Because right now, both of my characters are doing a very dubious... They're doing a dubious job at dealing damage, all right? He deals one damage a hit. She deals one damage a hit. We got to get weapons. We got to get armor. That'll boost up their HP. It'll boost up their stamina. It'll boost up their damage power. It'll also, the weapons you give them in this game, give them special abilities. The combat in this game is actually real time. These are actually hotkeys that you can hit right here in combat to trigger certain attacks and fight with the enemy and cast heals and things of that nature. 
Another child has joined the colony. So we'll assign this guy over here so that he can become our preserver. And then we'll have a fully rounded out team of adventurers ready to go for the next generation. In fact, apparently this guy turned 15 and grew the manliest mustache and the hardest chin that the world has ever seen in the history of ever. I know, wild and crazy how the kids grow up on war. Now that half of our adventuring team has been leveled up, it's time for us to start making some gear and some armor, I think. So we'll go ahead and put that industry over here and line it up on that side. I don't know if I have a child ready to go, though. Which character is idle? Oh, I see what happened here. Okay, so Loanek. Come work over here. This guy's an old man, so he's going to die soon. They do have age cycles that they go through. Uh, so, for example, this guy right here just got his first stack of decaying. Once they get up to a certain age, I don't know if it's prescribed at 75, but they start getting stacks of decaying, which starts depleting their stats, and they start getting bad at their work. And so, he's getting slower at it. It's unfortunate that he's responsible for making boards, uh, but as you can see, this guy put on a little outfit, and now he's going to start working on his shield right skill. And when he levels up, he's going to produce like a weapon or a piece of armor or something else we can use to prep our army over here and get them ready to go out into the field and smite evildoers. And in fact, it may be time to like swap him out. It might be a good idea anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and this new child that was just born, since she doesn't have any malices or issues with working, uh, effectively, I'm going to have her come back over. What does this do? Yardrin's gatekeeper? The hell is that? Huh, I guess I never fiddled with this thing when I was getting ready, but these guys have crazy endurance. Yardrum's ex Oh, it just gives you like a full adult out of there? Sick, dude. All right, I'll take it. Well, do what you gotta do, man. Whatever uh, you feel like is the right course of action, take care of it. But we've got, how old is he? He's 17 when he came through? That's pretty good, too. Hmm, that means he's like ready to go on like a job to do like a thing. All right. Well, let's take a look around and figure out what we've got on hand that we can get him to do. We've got clay pits over here that we can have him come work in. It's kind of a crappy job. Like, imagine you get out of Hell's jail cell, and they're just like, Hey, what's going on, dude? You work in the clay pit. I'm like, oh, I don't want to work in the clay pit. That would suck. As I understand it, in the medieval world, this was kind of the ass end of a job, bro. I don't want to do this. Oh, well, these are the things that happen to the best of us. Our adventurers over here, unfortunately, our protector has not been getting very many block buffs. I guess I'll just focus on his endurance and on his HP. I guess. We are a little bit low on foodles. They just pinged me and said that we're low on vegetables. So it may not be a terrible idea. Oh, he went back to work sawing logs. Well, I don't know how to get rid of the guy then. All right. I was trying to get him unassigned from that job, but he doesn't seem to be taking the hint. Sir, you're too old. It's time to let the next generation take over. I know that it's difficult. I know that it's not fun. All right. I know that when you're 25 and you have a dream of making planks, nobody tells you someday you're going to be 75, still wanting to make planks, but aging out of it. But that's just life, my friend. You're too slow. Can I get another one over here? What happens when I do that this time? Oh, it's got a cool down. Okay, so I got to wait 30 minutes before I can use that again. Well, that would have helped with my population issues on my last run. I didn't even fiddle with that thing. I just thought it was decorative, bro. I thought it was the gate that we stepped through in order to get to this realm. Our shield right finally produced something. So it looks like we've got a male hauberk in here, it looks like we've got a buckler, and it looks like we've got a helmet. I'll probably take the simple male hauberk, and then what we'll do is we'll give that to Shaw. And as you can see, he puts on the actual little breastplate, so everything shows up on your characters except for helmets, from what I've seen so far. Adventure is leveled up on this side, we can have them bypass on a bonus in order to get another weapon churned out faster. I think it's not the worst idea. Weapons are good. These guys are definitely all going to want to have weapons. And so we'll give them all clubs for right now because this guy is busy producing armor at the moment. And so he, you can sometimes get weapons out of the out of the protector station, but it's not as if you go to the slayer station, they produce a lot of weapons. This little guy over here produced a statue, but it doesn't do anything. 
I would like to see like everything have a use, kind of like the resting huts do. I think that's a really appealing idea anyways. Nursemaid leveled up. We can get high stat children or we can get remedial children. Yeah, let's get a high stat child. Why not? Uh, this guy's going to die soon, and so somebody's going to have to take over on his job anyways. I was going to say, if you could go in there and start gathering and just getting XP for gathering to shore up our food supply, because I'm noticing that we have a food throughput problem. Like, we have plenty of meals to last us a long time. It's just we're not producing enough vegetables to deal with Subject 18's mastery of cooking, which is whipping out food so fast that we can't even stay on top of it. You leveled up Carpenter. We'll go ahead and get another resting hut. That sounds good. Society always needs places to rest, so there you go. There's lots of different building designs in this game. They will have subtle differences, like this one has a stone floor. This one has a dirt floor. This one right here has a different chimney than that one right there. That's one of those little details I look for in city builders, just to avoid the repetition of everything looking the same. Another eggplant we can place over there. And this is where I come to kind of like the critique of the game, which is that there's just kind of like too much downtime, I guess. Uh, you spend a lot of time just waiting for level ups because there's not a lot of middle stuff that happens emergently. Uh, to force you out of that groove and get off the rails. I'll take you in and show you what some combat looks like in just a minute once we get these guys all armed up. Oh, apparently we're under attack by spiders. In the couple hours that I played the game, I never got attacked on this map. I had to go out and fight them. Uh, where are the spiders coming from? Do we have, like, a directional indicator as to where our spidery eight-legged friends are going to show up from? Who even knows? I guess when they show up, they'll show up. But it says the spiders have a vendetta against one of our guys. I don't know what he did to the spider folk, but he must have done something. This guy leveled up digging. He can place a new deposit. We can get three stacks of mud bath, or we can get some pots. Let's go ahead and keep making clay pits over here that he can utilize for when he uses up all of these on this side, because eventually that's going to happen. We've also got water down there. It may not be a terrible idea to get a fisherman next. Starting to get pricey to produce these kids. 100 points, Connor's in. All right, do we have the stuff that we need in order to make a fishing hut? We do not. We need more timber. Might be a good idea to get another woodworker, too. Although, I don't know what our log throughput's looking like here. It looks like we're about even on logs versus timber. Uh, we are officially under attack. Okay. Ready the squad. Send them over here to fight with this guy. There you go. Beat that fool to death. We didn't really have to use any, like, tactics or anything on that one because they just ran up on us. If they drop loot, uh, you can grab a character and tell them to go pick up the loot, and it just automatically gets added to the stockpile. Uh, you don't need to wait for them to bring it on back to the gathering hut, or anything else like that. I am actually happy to see that we were attacked by spiders. I swear to God, I played this for like hours before I started recording this video. Not with this colony, but with another one. I never got attacked once. I just sat around in stasis. Good. That's the kind of emergent event that shakes you out of your stupor that I'm looking for. You know, things that wipe out your crops for a little while. Things that make it so you're constantly defending from sieges for a little while. Other societies arriving with ultimatums and having to deal with that. There are other factions and things in this game, but like interacting with them seem kind of sparse from when I was playing around. Maybe it's further on into the game, but we do have a bunch of level ups here. A tomato field. Sure, just keep making that field big and beautiful over there. After all, it's our food and we don't want to die. I don't think I have too many people generating influence so we'll have somebody erratic do it we've got a shield right level up that gave us nothing too crazy good we got the quaff which we can put on shaw oh he does put on the little helmet i guess i must have crafted helmets last time that don't show up on the character maybe they just don't show up on the children i was arming my children aggressively I mean, he looks much more threatening now than he was before. He's also leveled up his adventuring. Let's go with a little bit more HP for you, I guess. That sounds all right to me. 
Uh, it looks like our old man has finally died. We're going to need to do something about that. I don't know if the body actually affects anything when it's laying around on the ground. But I know I went to the food tab. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. I, I hear your judging gaze. We'll put his grave down at the end of the wall. We don't have enough wood really yet to start bringing up walls and building defenses and things to like funnel the enemy where we want them to go. We do have enough money for a coop though. That's going to lean on our vegetables a little harder because we got to feed the veggies to the chicken. The other option is that we can put in a slayer's forge and we can start producing weapons. Typically what I do is I have characters... I have the blacksmith bounce in between workshops producing what I need, whether it be weapons or whatever else. But in this case, that might work out. You're self-buffed. Let's get... Let's lower your threat a little bit, and then your personal development, we can make you kind. I, I feel like kindness is an important thing for, for any healer to have. This person leveled up and can become humble. They can become brave. Or they can become violent. We'll add Violent because that gives a nice boost to movement speed, and this person does a lot of walking. And as you can see, your characters do get faster, and they do get more efficient as they level up. Like, they get really, really good at it. I need one more weapon. That's all that I need. One more weapon. All right, so our guys are somewhat equipped right now. I've got, I mean, Shaw's looking the best, all right? Shaw has, like, the full equipment set going on. These guys basically just have a weapon, and enemies can hit for, like, 10 or 15 so that's a little bit of a problem. We'll keep spitting out kids, though. We'll get Dugald in here. And then it looks like my gather has also leveled up. Yeah, throw some cabbages in there. Why not? Cabbages are good. So Sewin hasn't been assigned to anything yet. And then we also have another kid, right? Yeah, we got two kids rattling around that are not assigned to anything. I do think we could use another mason, so I think that would be an okay idea because there's two workstations over here. I don't know if we can have multiple cooks, but it may be worth it for this little kid over here to become a cook. I don't know if multiple people can cook around the fire at a time. It looks like they can't. So we're going to need a separate cook fire as well for them to work with. There we go. We'll drop that in right there, and then you go over to there. Perfect. Perfect. Now that our battle team is kind of set up with the stuff they need, it's time for us to explore the map. We're going to try to keep the tank out front and make sure that he doesn't run into any problems. There are little points of interest all over the map that you can run into, like Carnip up here. I don't know what he does. I think he's a traitor or something like that, but I don't know if he introduces himself to you later. But you're going to want to send out your little adventuring parties uh, basically to go find trouble. It's the only way they can level up their main class and get better at what they're doing. We do have one person that's kind of hungry right now. There's a fox right there. Get him. And then what we'll do is, with you right here, taunt the fox so that it only hits you because you've got the highest block chance to mitigate damage. And you can see they're all kind of running headlong into combat, throwing down on people right now. His blocks have been really effective. And there you go, we've defeated an enemy. Looks like he dropped the brisket, and it looks like he dropped a foxtail. I don't know what that's going to be useful for later on. But while you're out and away from home, you can tell your guys to encamp. Uh, that means they will automatically teleport food over from the stockpile. They will eat it, and then they will sleep until their stamina and their health is full. And then you can pull them on out of encamping, and then send them back on out into little adventures. Everybody's pretty much at full health right now, so I don't think they need to rest for long. It was basically just like one person that was hungry, but there's a scavenger over here. Yeah, you guys get on the scavenger. Keep your threat profile low. Oh, he throws axes? I didn't realize that was a throwing weapon. That's actually pretty sick. Especially given the case that he's a healer, so it keeps him out of harm's way. He can heal wounds, but it looks like it costs us energy to do that. You got scuffed up pretty good in that fight. I wasn't expecting you to get hit that hard. There's another one down there. What did he drop? Sundown Chowder? Okay, we'll add the Sundown Chowder to the consumables list. We'll see if we can take another one. I don't know how well this is going to go. Healer's getting, or I'm sorry, DPS is getting chomped on pretty good too. 
poultry meat right there, and let's encamp them so that they can get their HP back. I do like the little Baldur's Gate, like, red health descending thing they've got going on on over the side. But ultimately, we're building towards something. So as you can see, these guys are leveling up their Slayer, they're leveling up their Preserver, they're leveling up their Protector. You need your guys to get stronger, because taking down these bosses is a big undertaking. You may need your army to be even larger than this, too. And so that's kind of what you're keeping your eye on, what you're working towards. Other maps will have other objectives, like one of them is to build like a big legendary boat and sail away. Uh, there's a number of different maps in this game, three or four of them that you can play around with, plus a tutorial map. I like the game. I think it's a really good foundation, but that's not to kind of sweep away the fact the game's been in development for a long time, and it starts. it's time to start filling in the gaps and getting that emergent gameplay in there. The good news is the next patch, which is coming soon, uh, seems to be addressing just that, and so we'll see how that goes. Oh, you guys are just headlong, huh? Okay, all right. Oh boy, we're getting crashed into right now. All right, well, one enemy at a time. I may need you to heal an ally. And you're going to want to get that off soon. You... Shield slam him. Maybe run away as well. Maybe we'll just, like, kite a little bit. I don't think kiting is functioning here. Oh, no, he's down, dude. Shaw's dead. Fight for your lives. It's your only hope. It looks like getting away is not really in the cards. Life's difficult when you're a tank, all right? Healer dropped the ball. We did live through it, though. We did live through it. And the benefit here is that Enogen leveled up her, her Slayer skill. So we can get Speedy Entrant, which gives her a stack of Swift Handed, which increases her attack speed by 15%. Sudden Empowerment. Uh, we can get that as well. We've got Ruthless Precision on this side. When Endurance Damage is dealt, the damage character receives a 10% chance of an extra 10 damage. Go for that one right there. See if you can get that rock. And you guys can camp up, and then we'll pick up all of Shaw's stuff. And luckily, everyone on Earth has leveled up their traits a thousand times over here, so we should be able to replace Shaw. It's going to take a little bit to train up a replacement. But that's the game. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were fooling around with the first men, which is a very, very interesting colony survival game. I like it for the novelty, and I'm hoping they get those emergent aspects in there, like the spider attack. I liked that a lot. I thought there was going to be more of them. Uh, but anyways, I'll see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Bye, folks.